you can count on. This is WTVM News Leader 9. The ride-sharing company Uber is set to make its grand return to Auburn today. Coming up, a look at if Columbus could be in the company sites. Plus... Robbery is not the motive. Then what is? Robbery charges are being dropped against three men accused of murdering Columbus. Ahead, hear from one defense attorney who says the right decision was made. And it's another muggy start across the Chattahoochee Valley with some showers on the radar. We'll take a look at that and your extended forecast coming up. Thanks for joining us for News Leader 9 Morning on this Thursday. I'm Cheryl Renee. Chuck is off today. I'm Elizabeth Diamore. A lot going on in the weather department as far yeah. as these dew points. Yes, they are so high and just making things feel so sticky as soon as you walk outside. Yes. And it's always worse in the morning. You know, mm. it's just it's just bad. It's just bad. <laughs> and uh, things not changing today or for the next few, but uh, we talked about it earlier. Relief yes. is in it's sight. It's coming. It's yes. coming. Lower right. dew points will come next week. So that is lower humidity values, not as sticky, and lower rain chances. But uh, over the next coming days, we'll be dealing with a very similar forecast each day, starting off with temperatures in the 70s. It's sticky outside and we do have rain and storms in the forecast for the afternoon, but we've had some overnight showers and even some thunderstorms around uh, that we've been looking at the radar this morning. But uh, right now we are starting to get much drier conditions in there, and this will be the case for most of this first half of the day. Now after lunchtime, we're going to have to watch the radar for more showers and storms to develop. If you're headed up to the Atlanta airport today to, ch to catch a flight, no delays as of now, but they also have storms in their forecast. And so don't forget to, if you are traveling, you can check out uh, your flight status at WTVM.com by clicking on that weather tab. The morning ride in for the kiddos I gave it an A. No major issues this morning. A little on the damp side, but coming home, make sure they have an umbrella just in case because as they get off the bus, they could run into some of these thunderstorms. Also for your commute home, similar situation. Everyone, though, dealing with the heat. We'll talk about those feel like temps that will be in the triple digits for some and also look at the traffic conditions. All right. Thank you so much, Elizabeth. 32 now after the hour. We have more details this morning about the court cases of three men accused of murdering Columbus. Armed robbery charges are being dropped against Durain Waller, Jaquan Clark, and Akevius Powell. They are accused of killing Damon Dix Jr. June 15th at Double Churches Park. Jennifer Curry is representing Clark and says the armed robbery charge was based on texts that haven't been presented in court, along with surveillance footage of Dix with a backpack before the murder. The groom transportation video that showed the victim um, exiting groom I showed him carrying a backpack and there was not a backpack recovered at the scene where the victim was found. Um, so that was the basis for the armed robbery charge was the missing backpack. But law enforcement wasn't able to present any evidence or uh, any testimony to show that the backpack was taken from the victim. All three men have pleaded not guilty to murder and are in the Muskogee County Jail without bond. A Columbus man who pleaded guilty to robbing a bank is beginning his prison sentence this morning. You're looking at Victor Butler, who was sentenced to 17 years in prison Tuesday. Butler admitted to the September 2015 robbery of the SunTrust Bank on Auburn Avenue in Columbus. Police say he was caught on surveillance video stealing nearly $2,000. Butler was arrested the next day. It is 33 after the hour this morning. We are hearing from the family of a man who was killed in an accident in Russell County. The family of Travis Davis says his funeral is this Saturday. Davis was one of four men killed August 13th after a Ford F-150 collided with a Toyota Avalon. Davis was a passenger inside the pickup. His mother, Delphine Pierce, says she is still trying to process the loss. I just told her that Travis was dead. And we couldn't believe it. And I still haven't accepted that he's gone. You know, my mind, believe it, but it haven't got in my heart yet. Because on both sides of the Davidson Spiral family is hurting right now. Pierce says she doesn't know where her son was going when the accident happened. Davis leaves behind three sons. New this morning, the Georgia Department of Labor says the unemployment rate is going down. The July unemployment rate was 5% down from 5.1 in June. The rate in July of last year was 5.7%. In the month, the state added 2,300 jobs and the number of employed Georgians grew by more than 19,000. Today marks the third day of the Alabama special session and this morning members of the Senate will be reviewing lottery and spending bills. More debate is expected to take place today after lawmakers battled for hours over a lottery bill.
The problems stem from disagreements over slot machine style games and legalizing gambling across the state. Senate President Pro Tem Del Marsh is calling it a razor thin vote. Because you have a percentage of that body that I don't care what it looks like. If it says lottery, it's no. I don't foresee a compromise at this point that would cause the Senate to have 21 votes. A Senate committee will also begin looking at a spending plan for the BP oil settlement. The plan passed in the House yesterday and includes money going to debt payment and building roads in South Alabama. It will also provide $70 million to Medicaid, which is missing $85 million in funding. Happening today, Governor Robert Bentley will be visiting East Alabama. He wants to see firsthand some of the ongoing projects to improve Phoenix City. The governor will be briefed on the River City Foundry, which is a new business startup accelerator. His public event starts at 1115 this morning at the Troy University Riverfront Campus, and there will be a luncheon and meet and greet at 1230 at the Courtyard Marriott, also in Phoenix City. Also happening today, Bob Wright's Symposium on Business Empowerment is taking place at the Columbus Trade Center. The symposium features world-class business leaders giving advice on how to improve your business. And this morning, we are joined live by the moderator, ABC News anchor and reporter Byron Pitts. Good morning to you. Good morning, my friend. How are you? I'm doing great, and welcome to Columbus. Thank you. Thank you. It's good to be back. Yes. Well, when we say empowering businesses, Byron, what does that mean? Well, look, um, Bob Wright isn't just a local treasure, right? This is a gentleman who's a national treasure. So Bob, I call them friends of Bob. These are men and women who run multi-million dollar businesses, in a few cases, billion dollars with the B businesses, who have come to Columbus a as a favor to Bob, actually, to sit down and to meet with local business people who are looking to grow their business, uh, looking to grow opportunity, to, to learn the, the values of successful business people, of leadership, of integrity. Um, I call it, I call the symposium a how-to symposium. If you want to grow your business, and look, people in Columbus don't need a lot of help, right? Because this is the birthplace of Aflac, Coca-Cola, and there's something in the soil down here, right? That people, <laughs> right? There's an entrepreneurial spirit here that people embrace. And so Bob has brought in his friends from around the country, people with international experience, to add a little flavor to, to the rich soil that's already here. Okay, so Byron, tell people what's going to actually be taking place at the Trade Center today. Lay it out for us. Well, all right, so we'll have a number of conversations. Uh, I'll, 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 I'll interview, uh, I've had a little experience interviewing folk, mm -hmm. and I'll sit down with the business people sometime, 101, uh, 102, and we'll talk about their best practice. For instance, one of the people coming in is Melanie Hobson. Mm -hmm. uh, Melanie is a household name. She, she is the president of Aerial Investment, the oldest uh, black-owned investment firm in the country out of Chicago. So she'll fly in uh, later today on her private plane. Uh, to sit down and say, here's how we grew this business. These are our best practices. Um, there, there's another gentleman who's coming down who runs a defense contracting business. He started. He and his wife started the business with two thousand dollars. Now it's a thirty-plus million dollar business. And now they'll, they'll connect the dots for people. And they'll also talk about the importance of service. Um, the, uh, many of them, like Bob Wright here in Columbus, these are people who are philanthropic, who believe that part of doing, doing, g doing well is mm -hmm. doing good. Mm -hmm. and, they'll, and they'll share their experiences. So hopefully we'll make people laugh a little bit, inform them, uh, may shed a tear when you hear these powerful stories of how people have been able to live the American dream because of the great opportunities our country provides people. And lastly, Byron, why was it important for you to take part in this? Well, Bob, is, Bob writes a dear friend, and, and Bob's one of those guys, when Bob asks you, you say yes. <laughs> that's right? true, ask, that's true. <laughs> it, it, right, I didn't have to explain what it is, you just say yes. And, and also, I think, for all of us as journalists, we, and, and, we, and we cover our communities all across the country, and, and for me, all, all around the world, and when you're trying to connect the dots as to how do you allow people to live their best lives, when you talk about crime, those kinds of issues, employment's a big deal. If you, if you allow a person to have a job, build their business, because what these small business people do, right, they mm -hmm. create jobs, they create opportunities for people. So we as journalists, we, we want our communities to thrive and to do well, and I know how important it is to create opportunity for people, because if a person get a job, they can provide a home, uh, they can provide a good education for their child, and every community, America benefits from that. All right, well, we want to let people know, Byron, that it is sold out. You know, it's, it's a very exciting time for Columbus to have all these people here. So if you're interested, you'll have to come back next year and come to the symposium.
All right. Well, it's nice Absolutely. having you here, Byron, in Columbus. Thank you, my friend. Have for a great day. This morning, enjoying the show. All right. Thank you thank so you. much. Pleasure talking to you. Bye -bye. All right. Bye bye. It is 20 before the hour happening today. If singing is one of your talents and community service is your passion, you might want to head to Auburn University today. Joining us in the studio is News Leader 9's Marla Spence with more on karaoke for a cure. Sounds interesting, Marla. It's quite interesting, Cheryl. Today, the Auburn community is coming together to sing for a cause. They'll be heading out to Auburn University for karaoke for a cure. Today's event will benefit Relay for Life of Auburn University. Relay for Life is an organization that gives everyone in the community across the globe a chance to celebrate the lives of people who have battled cancer. Answer. Karaoke for a Cure will be happening on the Cater Lawn at Auburn University. The event kicks off at 730 Central Time tonight with free pizza and a photo booth. Now at today's event, participants will have the opportunity to learn more about Relay for Life. They'll also be learning how they can join forces with the organization to battle cancer. Back to you, Cheryl. All right, great cause. Like you said, thank you so much, Marla. 19 before the hour happening today. Friends of the Phoenix City Russell County Library are holding in the bag of books sale. All you do is buy a large brown grocery bag for $5 and fill it with as many books as you can. The sale is open today to those with special needs from 4 to 6 this evening. Then it will be it will uh, reopen tomorrow uh, for, from 2 to 6 for everyone at the library on 17th Avenue in Phoenix City. With students back in school, the state of Alabama is getting ready to implement a new program to improve schools. The Every Student Succeeds Act is taking education decisions away from the federal government and giving power to the state. The ESSA is replacing No Child Left Behind, and it lets Alabama officials make decisions like how to administer standardized tests and how the state can spend federal funding. The one-size-fits-all kind of blanket education reform did not seem to work very well. The great thing about ESSA, again, is individualized to the state. Educators say the new flexibility will give them a chance to keep arts and music programs at Alabama schools. Could be a little easier getting around in Auburn today as the ride-sharing company Uber is returning to the city. Uber says it's exploring the possibility of also coming to Columbus. Uber began operating in Auburn in 2014, but stopped because of city regulations. But recently, city leaders passed an ordinance that allows the company to run. Uber is currently in service in more than 500 cities around the world. And in a statement, Uber says it looks forward to expanding throughout Georgia. Let's hope so. 18 now before the hour, and let's get a check of our traffic. Here's Elizabeth Diamore. Thanks, Cheryl. I wanted to take you to Auburn and Opelika, where they just got Uber in and looking okay on the roadways. No major traffic tie-ups there. Don't forget, if you see any problems, let us know by downloading that Waze app. Heading down to Fort Benning this morning, looking okay on Interstate 185. Also, closer to home, Macon and Veterans moving fairly smoothly. Manchester, a few more folks out on Manchester trying to make their way into work, so slowing down just a touch. We did have some overnight showers and thunderstorms, but as we scan the Alert Center Radar Network right now, we are are uh, seeing a pretty dry sky for most everybody south of Thomaston looking at some showers still there in Upson County, but most everyone else staying dry and that'll be the case for most of the rest of the morning. That rain chance we're talking about the very typical summertime storms anticipated, so that won't be until after lunchtime and as we head in towards the evening hours. So that means in time for your commute home later today, we're talking rain. So we'll take a look at your future cast and a look ahead to the weekend coming up. All right, thanks Elizabeth. We'll tell you who's celebrating a birthday on this Thursday. Thursday coming up. Plus, wildfires continue to rage in California. A look at the efforts being made by thousands of firefighters trying to stop the fire. That's coming up as well.